Hey everybody, we're going to do an empirical formula. I have a funny story for you. I took AP Chemistry. I learned one thing. Here it is, empirical formula. Kind of interesting sidebar. The teacher that I had, it was his last year teaching, and just so happened, I went to the same high school as my mom. She had him his first year teaching, and honestly, he gave me my grades. He gave everybody their grades. I got an A every single quarter, but I only learned one thing, empirical formula. I like empirical formula. Here it is. Empirical formula is the smallest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. Um, now that might seem a little uh, confusing. Let me give you an example. We could have C6H6. That is benzene, okay? That's not the smallest whole number ratio. The empirical formula for benzene is actually CH. You just divide those subscripts and that gives you the empirical formula. Um, so you reduce down to the smallest whole numbers. So this would be the empirical formula. And in the next video, I'll teach you how to get this. It's called the molecular formula. Okay, so we are looking for the smallest whole number ratio for isoprene. Now isoprene has carbon and hydrogen in it and we are giving percentages. Notice over here, I've written down our steps, okay? The steps that you need to follow. Here's step number one to find the empirical formula. Number one, assume a 100 gram sample, so you simply change percent to gram. Now let me show you why. If I have a 100 gram sample and carbon is 88.17%, that means I have 88.17 grams. So it's just an easy trick. So you can take percentages, assume a 100 gram sample, and just change that percent to a gram. Now, sometimes this will throw students. You will have some problems where you're given grams. Great, skip step one. They did something for you. If you're given grams, you're just going to go immediately to step two, okay? Now, step two, this is crucial. This is the crux of empirical formula. We know that we have carbon and hydrogen, but we have to find out in what amount. I could write this right now, C subscript, X, H subscript Y. I don't know how many I have of each other, of each of those. Those subscripts are molar ratios, okay? Molar ratios. For one mole of isoprene, I have so many moles of carbon and so many moles of, of hydrogen. So what do we do to find a molar ratio? I bring grams to moles. <laughs> if you're ever in doubt, just go to moles. Bring grams to moles. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to put our 12.01 grams of carbon on the bottom so the grams cancel. One mole of carbon in the numerator. Hydrogen. One mole of hydrogen has 1.01 grams of hydrogen. Grams cancel and we're going to end with moles. Let's do the calculation here. 88.17 divided by 12.01. I'm going to do four sig figs since that's what we're given in the percentage will be 7.341 moles of carbon. Now, the hydrogen, 11.83 divided by 1.01 .01 is 11 point, I'm going to go to four sig figs, 7.1 mole of hydrogen. Now, what we just found is the molar ratio. So, I could write it like this. C, 7.341, hydrogen, 11.71. That's the molar ratio but it's ugly, it's a total mess. And notice, we need smallest whole number. We need whole numbers. So there's a math trick, a math trick to get this ratio to whole numbers. Here it is, step three. Divide by the smallest mole. Our smallest mole is 7.341. So I divide 7.341, 7.341. Well, of course, this is going to be one one mole of the carbon. When I divide 11.71 divided by 7.341, this is what we get. 1.600. 1 1.6. It's still not a whole number. Now, often when you do empirical formula, you will get whole numbers here. Boom, you're done. Pretend with me. If this had been a nice even number one, whole number one, then I just would have written CH like that and been done but I can't, I still have a fraction. So at this point, we're going to do step four. Now, you only do step four. 
multiply by a factor if you didn't get a whole number. And I do have um, a range on this. If you ever end in 0.9 or 0.1, you can round. If I had gotten 1.9, I would have rounded up to two. If I had gotten 1.1, I would have rounded down to one. If you get anything else, you have to multiply by a factor to get to a whole number. So you just look at the tens place and you think, what number do I have to multiply by to get to a whole number? So I'm thinking six. Um, what do I have to multiply six by to get it to a, ten, uh, a nice even zero, like a tens place? I have to multiply by five. Six times five is 30. I've got to multiply 0. 0.6 by five, and that gives me three. Now here's the deal. This is a ratio. So whatever I do to one, I have to do to the other times three. Oh, so sorry, times five. I said five and I wrote three times five times five. So this is going to give me five and that's going to give me eight when I multiply those. Now I have my smallest whole number. Notice it can't be reduced um, and they're whole numbers. So final, final um, thing that we do, those are the subscripts. Carbon is going to be a five and hydrogen is an eight. And that is isoprene. That is isoprene. Um, I want to point out step four. You might not have to do. Again, if you get whole numbers when you divide by the smallest mole, which usually you will, you're done. You go right here. It's only if you have a decimal that's between 0.2 and 0.8 that you need to multiply by a factor. Number one, right here. That one as well, you might not need to do. If they give you grams, you skip and you go right to number two. The driving force in all of this, remember, is molar ratio. We're finding the smallest moles, the molar ratio between all the elements. Okay, empirical formula, good work.